Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy and today I have a really good video for you guys. It's going to be the Intel i5-8600K going up against the Ryzen 7 1700. Now you may be thinking, well Kevin, why are you comparing those two CPUs? They're sort of like in two different classes. Well, it's because of the pricing. So right now in New Zealand, both of these CPUs are of a very similar price. They're actually quite close together. And when I looked overseas as well, uh, many places are selling these guys at similar price points. So I thought it would be quite a cool video to do to see which one is actually the better value CPU. So let's talk about the CPUs themselves then. We'll start with the i5-8600K here. So this is a 14 nanometer Coffee Lake CPU coming in with 6 cores and 6 threads, a 3.6 gigahertz base clock and a 4.3 gigahertz turbo clock. And it is also fully unlocked because it is a K-skew, which means you can overclock the CPU as high as it's capable of going up to, or as high as you're comfortable with, I suppose you might say. Now the Ryzen 7 1700, so this is a 14 nanometer Ryzen CPU coming with 8 cores and 16 threads, a 3 gigahertz base clock and a 3.7 gigahertz turbo clock and it is also fully unlocked which means you can overclock this CPU also. Now let's talk about the test rigs quickly. We'll start with the Intel test rig. So the 8600K was tested with the MSI Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon, which is an absolutely fantastic motherboard. The Ryzen 7 1700 was tested with the ASUS Prime X370 Pro, which is a great entry-level X370 motherboard. Now, to keep it fair, both of them were tested with the same set of G-Skill DDR4 memory at 2933 MHz for all the testing. Both tested with the MSI Gaming X GTX 1080 Ti with the latest NVIDIA driver for both of them. And they were both tested with the Deepcool Gamex 120mm air cooler. So that being said, let's talk about the overclocking and the temperatures. So the 1700 here, very typical of a Ryzen CPU, went up to 4 GHz. Pretty standard there, that's what you should expect out of any Ryzen CPU. Uh, like 3.9, 4 GHz, maybe you get 3.8 if you get a bit of a dud one. Um, and maybe you get 4.1, 4.2 if you get a really good one. So yeah, 4 GHz here, pretty standard for the 1700. The 8600K on the other hand, this thing went up high. It went to 5.2 GHz at 1.35 volts. So very good here. This is a retail model. Both of these are retail models, remember, that weren't sent to me by companies. These are retail models off the shelf at Playtech. 5.2 gigahertz at 1.35 volts. So very impressive there for the 8600K. But how did it do in terms of temperatures? So for this, I ran the Ida64 CPU stress test. And as you guys can see, on average, the 8600K ran about 10 degrees hotter than the 1700. But even then, with the 120 millimeter air cooler, it only went up to 80, well only, but it went up to 86 degrees Celsius at 5.2 gigahertz, which means you could get away with your 120 millimeter, a good 120 millimeter air cooler with overclocking the 8600K up quite high. Now, some of you might not be comfortable with the temps up there, but I mean, that's in a stress test. When you're gaming, it's never gonna get that high. So personally, I would be very comfortable with that. That should be just fine with the 8600K. So with all that being said, let's jump to the benchmarks. Now there have been a few changes, so I'll talk about them now. Uh, the Dirt Rally benchmark, I have retired that. It was getting a bit old, but I replaced it with another driving game, which is F1 2017. So that's replacing Dirt Rally. I've also added in two more games, because you guys are asking for more games. Assassin's Creed Origins and uh, Total War Warhammer 2, which I'm testing in DirectX 12. So with that being said, let's jump to the benchmarks and see what matters more. The Ryzen 7 1700's higher core count and thread count, or those high clock speeds on the 8600K.
are bad. So what do we make of those benchmarks then? Well, as you can see, in all the productivity type ones, the Ryzen 7 1700 ran away with it. I'm sorry about the PC Mark, the content creation one. The 8600K just would not do it. I don't know what was wrong. Might be an error with the program, but it would just would not do it. Uh, so I don't know what's going on there. So sorry about that, guys. But as you could see, the 3D Mark physics test and also the rendering test and handbrake is a good indicator of sort of uh, productivity. And the 1700 wins there hands down. That's not surprising. It's got 16 threads and 8 cores as opposed to the 6 threads, 6 cores of the 8600K. So that's, you know, we knew that was going to happen. However, what we also predicted would happen is because of the huge clock speed advantage of the 8600K, it would do a lot better in the 1080p games, and it did. Some of them were quite close, and the 1700 still put on a good show. But in other ones, they weren't so close, and the 8600K did a very good job. Remember, that's when it was at 1080p. Once we went up to 1440p, it started to get very, very close. And the uh, 1700 here was quite close to the 8600K. When you go up to 4K, they're pretty much identical. So that's basically how the benchmarks go. The 1700 basically doing better all round, um, but in pure game performance, pure game performance, the 8600K does the better job. Which brings us now to the conclusion, and we have to bring price into it. So right now in New Zealand at Playtech, you can pick up the Intel i5 8600K for 439 New Zealand dollars. Now if you want to pick up the Ryzen 7 1700, that's going to see you back 475 New Zealand dollars. But it also comes with a cooler, quite a good one. You won't need a 120mm air cooler to uh, overclock the uh, 1700 here. You can do it on the stock cooler just fine. The temps will get up there a bit. But if you're comfortable with that, you can get away with the stock cooler. Not only that, but you will require a Z370 motherboard with the 8600K, uh, which is, you know, right now they're actually quite pricey. Whereas the 1700, you can get away with a B350 motherboard, which is going to be a lot cheaper than a Z370. So all in all, uh, the 8600K will actually probably end up being more expensive than the 1700. However, in saying that, if you want the best 1080p gaming CPU out of these two, so you're gaming 1080p and you don't so much care about value, uh, then get the 8600K. Like Price-wise, yeah, it's going to cost you a bit more, but it will be the better gaming CPU at 1080p. Once you go up to 1440p, it gets so close that I would just pick whichever one's cheaper. So if you've got a 1440p monitor or 4K, um, then it's not really gonna matter. But for everything else, say you're doing you know, a bit of editing and things, productivity, photo editing, or something else on the side, then you're better off with the 1700. It's gonna be the better value, it's the better all-rounder, and it's the one I personally would pick. So out of these two, I pick the 1700 as my winner. I just feel it's the better CPU all-round. However, like always, that is just my opinion. So let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Which one of these CPUs would you pick? The 8600K? Because boy, this thing went up high in terms of clock speed. 5.2 gigahertz is getting up there, that's for sure. And the 1080p game performance was very, very good. Or would you pick the Ryzen 7 1700, which is the better value CPU. And of course, you're getting a bit more for your money as well, being that it is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU. Let me know in the comments section down below. I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel, Tech Showdown, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to support me and my co-host, Teddy. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.